Roosevelt's fear was that people like Charles Coughlin and Huey Long might siphon off enough votes from the Democratic Party as to split the, the, the working class or uh, vote on the left and give the election to a Republican uh, candidate. This was a very real concern. Roosevelt's watched the Huey Long share the wealth campaign. He's watched the country drift left. And so he's shrewd and politic enough to realize that if he moves in that direction, then he breathes a new uh, lease on life into his administration. This work in behalf of human needs is an essential part. And so in the summer of 1935, Roosevelt got Congress to pass his second New Deal, legislation to benefit Americans at the bottom of the economic ladder. The understanding that we've got to build from the bottom up Roosevelt was now pursuing permanent reforms to reduce the class divisions in America. It's about this time that Roosevelt begins to focus less on economic recovery and more on the long-term structural and institutional reforms that I think are his first interest. He once said to Francis Perkins, his Secretary of Labor, he said, the thing I want to do is to create a country in which no one is left out. And I think that, as much as any single sentence, summarizes his general social vision. In 1935, the president decided that labor unions could help achieve that social vision. He signed the Wagner Act, which gave unions the strong federal protection they had not received until now. It reflected Roosevelt's new understanding that workers were also consumers whose purchasing power could strengthen the economy. The vision of the New Dealers includes as a central premise that capitalism could be saved and should be saved by redistributing the way the economic system distributed its wealth and income. And one critical way to do that was to support a strong, robust labor movement, giving the labor movement the chance to bargain forcefully for its fair share of what it was producing. Supported by the Wagner Act, organized labor now had an historic opportunity to unionize America's biggest industries. Workers created a new union federation, the Committee on Industrial Organization, the CIO. The CIO sent organizers to steel mills, to rubber plants, and to car factories. The companies resisted, often violently. But this time, the workers really had Roosevelt on their side. And this time, they won. Millions upon millions of workers come into the uh, CIO, and those workers thereafter became some of the most handsomely compensated workers in the American scene. It's as a direct result of the passage of the Wagner Act and the CIO's organizing campaigns that many millions of industrial workers enter the middle class in the post-World War II era because of the gains affected in the middle of the decade of the 1930s. The civilization of the past hundred years with its startling industrial changes, has tended more and more to make life insecure. And so to protect Americans from some of the hazards of capitalism, President Roosevelt created his most far-reaching reform. This social security measure... Social security would guarantee an income to the old, the sick, and the unemployed. It would be funded by taxes, paid equally by employers and employees. The Social Security Act of 1935 is arguably uh, the most important single piece of legislation of the 20th century. It created a sense of vested rights that the American people have in the national government and gave Americans a sense that, that government was a good thing. These populist measures enabled the president to build political support among Americans who had been without significant influence in government. And now the White House took a greater interest in the 